Okay, here we have a typical related rates problem. A boat is being pulled in by means of a winch on a dock 12 feet above the deck of the boat, and we know that the winch pulls in the rope at a rate of 4 feet per second, and we need to find the speed of the boat when 13 feet of rope is out. So the first question is, how do I know this is a related rates problem? Well, look at what we're after. We're trying to determine the speed of the boat. That's a rate. That's an unknown rate. And look also, we know the winch is pulling in the rope at a given rate of 4 feet per second. So there must be some uh, relationship between these two rates that will allow me to find this unknown rate, the speed of the boat. Okay, so that's how we know it's a related rates problem. Our first step, of course, is to draw a picture that tries to describe the situation. So let's do that first. Okay, so we have a boat here, we have the dock here, we have the winch up here at the top of the dock. Here's our rope tied to our boat and pulling it in. Now notice I haven't labeled anything yet. First I want to ask myself the question, what rates are known and what rates are unknown in the problem? Well, as we said, we know the winch is pulling in the rope at a rate of 4 feet per second. This word here, rate, that should be a red flag for us. We have a known rate of 4 feet per second. Let's write that down. Okay, so here it is. Now, what belongs to this rate? What thing in our picture up here that we can label has this rate of change? Well, this is the rate at which the rope is being pulled in. So this length right here, this length of rope, is changing by 4 feet per second. So let's label this length, say R, for rope, and then that means that this is the change in the rope length R with respect to time. In other words, this is the derivative of R with respect to time, or dr dt. Furthermore, we know that the winch is pulling the rope in, which means this length here is getting shorter, which means r over time is decreasing, which means this derivative I really should write as a negative. Okay, so we make that adjustment. dr dt is negative 4 feet per second. Now, we check our problem. Are there any other known rates? Well, no, that was the only one that was given to us in this problem. Keep in mind, other problems might have multiple rates that you can uh, set up as derivatives, known derivative values. But what about our unknown rate? Well, recall, we're trying to determine the speed of the boat when 13 feet of rope is out. So the speed of the boat, that is our unknown rate. But how can I write that as a derivative? What is changing with respect to time here as we consider the speed of the boat? Well, if we look at our picture here, suppose the boat's going, I don't know, 10 miles an hour or something like that. Isn't this distance to the dock changing at that speed? Aren't we losing then 10 miles every hour uh, as the boat moves towards the dock in terms of the distance between the boat and the dock? In general, there are lots of lengths that we could look at whose rate of change agrees with the speed of the boat. Generally, the distance from the boat, or whatever's moving, to any fixed point will do, but sometimes certain lengths are more convenient choices than others. A nice fixed point here for us is the point directly below the winch. So if I label this distance between the boat and the winch x, then that tells me dx dt corresponds to the speed of the boat the rate of change in this length with respect to time. Now we should be a little bit clear here. Actually dx dt gives us the velocity of the boat, which is slightly different than speed. This derivative value is either going to be positive or negative, which indicates that this distance is either increasing or decreasing. So I actually gain from knowledge of dx dt not only how fast the boat is moving, but in which direction. Of course, if it's decreasing, the boat's moving to the right, and if x is increasing, it's moving to the left. Okay, so just something to remember when we're all done here, and we find this unknown rate. Okay, so that's step one. What rates are known? What rates are unknown? 
write them down as the corresponding derivatives. Uh, make sure your picture is labeled accordingly. The next question we need to ask is, and it's really two questions, what is constant over time and what is true only for an instant of time? Look, as we go back up to our problem here, you might notice the 12 feet, the winch on the dock is 12 feet above the deck of the boat, and this 13 feet of rope is out. That's the instant that we're interested in. Look, the 12 feet, that's a constant. It's not changing. The winch is always 12 feet above the deck of the boat. So I'm free to go ahead and label that on my picture. Remember, we want this picture to be valid for all times t. However, when we look at 13 feet of rope being out, is it true that 13 feet of rope is always out? Is this always 13 feet long? Well, certainly not. We're drawing our rope in at a certain rate here. It's getting shorter every second. So this 13 feet of rope is only valid in an instant. Consequently, I'm not going to put 13 anywhere on this picture because it's not true for all times t, but I am, over here to the right, uh, going to indicate that the instant I'm interested in, uh, we know r equals 13. Okay, so I make a little notation to that effect. Okay, so what's next? After we figured out what rates are known and unknown, and after we've distinguished between things that are really constant, like this 12, and hence can be put in our picture, and things that are only true for an instant in time, like the length of the rope being 13 feet, the next question we need to ask, and let's push things up here a little bit so we've got some more room, is can I find a relationship, and by relationship I mean an equation, that involves just the important variables. Now, what in the world are the important variables here? Well, notice we really just have two, unless we count time as well. But in other re related rate problems, the picture might be different. You might have uh, quite a few variables floating around in your picture. How do I know which ones are important? That's why we asked these two questions. The variables who we're finding derivatives for, namely r and x, those are our important variables. We would like to find an equation that involves only r and x. If I knew more derivatives here, then I would want to find an equation that included those additional variables. But if I've got a variable up here in my picture uh, and no corresponding rate down here, I don't really want to worry about it. So then for us, this question becomes, can I find an equation that involves just r and x, and maybe some constants? Well, look, don't we have a right triangle here? Don't we have some sort of relationship between the lengths of sides of a right triangle? Can't we use the Pythagorean theorem here? Well, sure we can. This squared plus this squared had better give me this squared. There's my equation x squared plus 12 squared, or 144, equals r squared. So this gives me a relationship between these two variables. But what I need is a relationship between these two rates, between these two derivatives. I need to somehow introduce these derivatives into this equation. Well, how in the world do I do that? Well, if this equals this, Shouldn't the derivative of the left-hand side equal the derivative of the right? Sure. Let's scooch things up a little bit again. I can differentiate both sides with respect to time, this variable right here, to relate the rates, to introduce those derivatives. And I want to do so implicitly because x and r are changing with respect to time. They are, in a sense, functions of time. Okay, so the differentiation will happen uh, in a manner similar to implicit differentiation. So doing the differentiation, we get this. Notice the derivative of x squared is 2x and then times dx dt because x is treated as a function of time plus 144, the derivative of that being the derivative of a constant is just 0, 
equals the derivative of r squared, which just like x squared is 2r, and then times this dr dt piece, because r is a function of time. Now we have our relationship between the rates that are known and unknown, and the original variables x and r. But the question remains, do I know enough to solve for the unknown rate? Do I enough, know enough to solve for dx dt? That's the unknown rate. Well, I know pieces of this puzzle. I know dr over dt. That's right here. It's negative 4 feet per second. I know at least for one instant, in the instant that r equals 13, I would have a 13 here. I'm solving for dx dt, of course, but what about x? What is the length of x in my picture in this instant? So the follow-up question to this, once we realize that maybe there's something out there that I still need to know, is can I exploit the original relationship? That's this one right here. The original relationship between the variables, the important variables, to find the values of the other variables in the instant, the other variables I need. In this case, x. Well, let's give ourselves a little more room. Slide this up just a wee bit more. Let's remind ourselves of what we know in the instant that we're after, r equals 13. Uh, dr dt, of course, is negative 4. What could x equal, though? We don't know. But going back to this original relationship, and using this information, doesn't that tell us in the instant we're interested in? x squared plus 144 had better be r squared or 13 squared? And isn't this something I could solve for x with? Sure. We solve it in the normal way. We uh, bring the 144 to the other side, do the uh, subtraction. We need to take a square root plus or minus to solve for x. That gives us a negative 5 or positive 5. However, keep in mind, in our original picture, x is the distance from the boat to the dock. If x is negative, we're somewhere under the dock somewhere. Okay, so we probably don't want to consider negative 5 there. So let's go back over to here and uh, kill off the negative 5. And that just leaves x equals 5 as the value we need to plug in up here. And that's what we do then. We have all of the pieces. We've got x, we've got r, we've got dr, dt um, that work in that one instant in time so I can solve for the unknown dx, dt. So my last job here is to plug in what I know and solve for the unknown. Okay, doing that we find this. Uh, 2, there it is, times 5, the value of x we just discovered, times dx dt, that's our unknown, times 2 again, times the r uh, that we have for the instant in time we're interested in, and then times dr dt, which is negative 4 regardless of what time we're interested in. Solving this nicely linear equation for dx dt, we get dx dt is negative 52 fifths feet per second. Now, remember what we were after. Let's go back up to the original problem. We need to determine the speed of the boat when 13 feet of rope is out. That's not exactly what we found. Remember I made a comment about this at the beginning. This is the velocity of the boat. And velocity and speed are a little bit different because velocity indicates the direction in a certain sense. Notice we have a negative value for our derivative. That means this distance x is decreasing, which means the boat is moving to the right. Okay. However, speed is generally just a positive quantity. So we're just going to take the absolute value of what we have here to obtain the speed. So the speed is simply 52 fifths, or if you want to write it as a decimal, 10.4 feet per second. That's our answer. We're done. Hope that helps.